a podcast to honor the gods. This better come with a sacrifice. Dave X Media. Welcome to the Restricted Section, the podcast that belligerently disrespects the Harry Potter series to honor the author and her own belligerent disrespect. If you haven't done the reading, don't worry, we did it for you. Here's what we're talking about this week. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Chapter 14, The Thief, in which Ron gets splinched and we start our super fun camping trip. I'm your host, Christina. With me today is my friend, Jason. Say hello to the listeners, Jason. Hello to the listeners. Thank I did it. Did I do it right? Yes, you okay. did it right. Yay! <laughs> and also with us today is our friend Haley. Say hello to the listeners, Haley. Hi. This you may be able to hear is not the Haley you are used to, listeners. <laughs> this is a different Haley. <laughs> Haley had massive uh, vocal reconstructive surgery. <laughs> that would be, right. be so bananas. <laughs> Haley, tell the listeners your pronouns, please. She, her. Awesome. Yes, this Haley has two Ys in her name. Totally different person. <laughs> it's one of the more unique ways of spelling it, actually. I know. I love it. I really do. Haley's one of our Discord server moderators and just like a longtime friend of the network. And we are so happy to finally get you on the show. Yay. Hooray. And I realized that Haley, and I mean, if everything goes according to plan, Haley is going to be our our last first time guest, our last <gasps> new guest on the show. That's really incredible because you know we don't really get a lot of new guests these days. And Haley, when you were like, "Should I record this?" I was like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> She hasn't been on. <laughs> I'm, I just forget that people haven't been on the show. So I'm really glad that we got the opportunity to get you on. Yes, I'm excited and to for, be here. And for such a fun chapter. The funnest. <laughs> Forest. But, but before we get into it, Haley, tell the listeners a little bit about your Harry Potter history. So I've been into Harry Potter since I was in, I think, like, sixth grade, which would have been 2006. Um, my dad's ex-wife actually got me into it. Um, and I read all the books. Um, I don't remember what book was coming out, but I know I went to the midnight release of The Deathly Hollows, And mm. I got really into it. I like became a super fan. This was of course before I knew I was autistic, so I didn't know it was my hyperfixation. But it mm -hmm. was my hyperfixation for <sighs> 20 years. Not 20 years cuz that'd been 2 years in the future. <laughs> Isn't it great getting that autism diagnosis like late in life? <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> And you're just like, oh, maybe I was a little too obsessed. Maybe everyone else doesn't think like I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Most definitely. I am obsessed with so many things. And everyone in my life is like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I've been a fan of it since 2006. I actually have a tattoo. Yeah. Um, it's a book one. And it has luckily just Harry Potter in it. It doesn't have yes. anything else. Just Harry Potter. So it's safe. <laughs> nice. Okay. Nice. It what what does your tattoo look like? Um, it's a stack of books, and it says, I've lived a thousand okay. lives, and it has five <gasps> oh, books in it that have shaped my that's life. That's really nice. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really nice. really nice. Yeah, and I think that that's, like, a fitting place for Harry Potter, mm -hmm. because, like, no one, I don't think anyone here is denying that it's, like, what did you say, shaped shaped your life? Or mm -hmm. Oh, I have lived a thousand lives or whatever. Yeah, and they're, like, yeah. ones that have shaped my life and, like. I love that. Made me who yeah. I am. <laughs> Yeah, so it is a fitting place, and I assume there wasn't enough room on your tattoo to write the author's name, right? <laughs> I made a conscious choice not to include her name, because um, like nice. I have Sarah Dustin's name, because I couldn't decide of one um, book from Sarah Dustin to put on there. Oh, so, that's clever. So, yeah, I just chose not to put her name. I was like, you know, I don't care about her, I care about Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> my, my past self was helping me. 
What? You are you telling me you didn't enjoy the casual vacancy? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> no way i've never i tried reading that book my parents got it for me for christmas one year and i was like nope i'm good what is oh. what is the casual vacancy that was her that was jk rowling's first book after harry potter like outside oh of harry right potter. was that like her mystery novel or something or i think it was a mystery i did not read it personally that oh, sounds okay. me- like maybe something we I, would do yeah. over on burn before reading perhaps <laughs> yeah mm. <laughs> It's absolutely the worst. <laughs> Tell me, Haley, what Hogwarts house are you? I am a Hufflepuff. Woo! What a surprise. I went through, <laughs> I've gone through such identifying as different houses. I thought I was a Ravenclaw for the longest time. I mean, I've taken the Hogwarts test. I think my list was at like 25. And I would mark down the house, my wand, my Patronus, all the like different things I could get every time. And I'm like, oh, that's a Ravenclaw thing to do. And then I was like, oh, maybe I'm a Slytherin. And then I had my um, stepmom, actually. I read her every identifier, like the list of the ones. And mm. I had most Hufflepuff. Mm. Okay. So, okay. Now I'm a Hufflepuff. So you, this is... I think that this is the most, like, scientifically backed <laughs> housing sorting that we've gotten. There's data, there's evidence, there was math involved, and I'm proud of you for that. I have charts. I had a little, little spreadsheet. We have DNA tests to prove how much of a Hufflepuff you are. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> the only problem is that I realized I was a Hufflepuff after the author showed her true colors, so I don't have any merch from Hufflepuff. Oh, oh, yeah. Kind of the same. Didn't really. I, too, was on the uh, Ravenclaw to Hufflepuff <laughs> pipeline. I think it's something about, like, the hubris of being a teenager makes people think that they're Ravenclaw more, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> and then you get older and you're like, yeah, smart is cool, but have you tried being nice? <laughs> right? Ravenclaws can be nice. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's funny because, like, It's always the thing of, like, oh, where's your Slytherin buddy? And it's, like, I always get those TikToks of, oh, the Hufflepuffs are actually the ones that are, like, killing people. (laughs) Because honey badgers... What? Yeah, because, like, honey badgers are, like, vicious creatures. They'll just, like... Yeah. And... I didn't know that. Wait, seriously, Tina? Yeah. You you (laughs) haven't seen, like, the honey badger don't give a fuck meme? From, like, ten years ago? I guess I have seen that. I guess I didn't really file it away in my understanding of animal species. Oh, I wake up to that in my head every day. (laughs) But yeah, like, it's always the thing of the Hufflepuffs are the secret evil people. Or the secret, uh... Interesting. I could see it being like, uh... They're pulling the strings. Kind Mm -hmm. of one of those, like, you know, they're gonna be nice to you, but don't don't piss them off, because they'll get mad. Exactly, exactly. Interesting. Uh, there's something to be said for like, I'm not going to trip that much if someone hurts me, but like, if you hurt one of my friends, I'll fucking kill you. Yep. 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 Big, big puff energy. Okay. So tell me now, like, what is your favorite book in the series and where does Deathly Hallows fall in your ranking? So my favorite one is definitely Prisoner of Azkaban, mostly mm-hmm. because of the Marauders. I have yes. a <laughs> deep deep obsession of Remus Lupin. He is my favorite boy. Um, <laughs> so that whole Marauders thing made me love the Prisoner of Azkaban. Yeah. Um, yeah. Deathly Good ha- lore in that book. <laughs> yes, most definitely. Deathly Hollows is probably up higher on the list just because like, I like the clean ending of it all. And it was my first midnight release party. The only midnight mm-hmm. release party I've gone to. So... It has a special place in my heart because of that. Yeah, I think that for so many people, there was just so much like emotion behind this book that you kind of can't separate that from the act of reading it as like all of these plots come to an end. You kind of like, yeah, it's just really emotional. Yeah. Like, connected to it. Yeah, even though most of the book is camping, which is boring as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and it starts today. <laughs> Honestly, if you, if you look at, like, ca- the camping feels so long, 
but we just had 13 chapters before the camping starts and we only camp until chapter 22 so it's only for eight <laughs> only for eight only <laughs> <laughs> only for eight chapters chapter 19 yep so in the woods oh my god a lot does yeah. happen during the camping though a lot happens during the camping, but then there's also, like, The Life and Lies of Albus Dumbledore, mm. which is just a chapter about a book. Yeah. That kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> but then there's, like, Bethilda's Secret and the Silver Doe. And, the, the, like, something like Bethilda's Secret, there's not even any camping in that chapter. That's just not what they're doing. So yeah. it feels long because of this chapter and the next chapter are just like thinking chapters there's a couple just like yeah thinking chapters <laughs> which sucks okay so let's get into it so we can get out of the woods someday guys yeah someday <laughs> someday chapter 14 the thief this is what we call a miscellaneous chapter where it's just like a couple random things um not too long. And, yeah, and the author is just like, I'll put these together. I don't know. <laughs> they have just escaped the Ministry of Magic. That's like the last thing we heard is like they were apparating and Harry could tell that something was very wrong, which cool of him. Yeah, he must like be such tell, a smart boy. To tell something, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perceiving external stimuli like a like a real yeah, Person. he's re he's really man of actioning so far in this book. Just like his father. <laughs> <laughs> so Ron's dying. Ron's splinched. They're in a forest, and Ron is splinched. He's like D. Reg Cattermulling, mm -hmm. and there's a chunk of his arm missing. Hermione is trying to tend to him, but she's very emotional. I was kind of trying to put myself in her shoes a little bit like not that they're married or anything or in their 30s but I was like trying to put myself in her shoes like if something horrible had happened to my husband and it was like up to me to fix it like I think that would be really really stressful mm -hmm. I think I'd be acting the exact same as her like so rigidly focused <laughs> but like all of the tension in the world in my body just like get me the thing the thing the thing in the bag <laughs> yeah <laughs> i would have you know not what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah like i would have never <laughs> been like oh you know that one potion i would have been like the thing that helps save <laughs> you know that spell that just makes things come to you like super fast and use all the time i can't remember it anymore <laughs> <laughs> And I think that I feel like this is the kind of situation where you just like can yell at people. Like Hermione has like, like go ahead, girl, yell yell at whoever you need to right now. Yeah, this is an emergency. Harry Harry gets it. <laughs> oh yeah. Do you guys pronounce it Accio or Accio? I do Accio. I thought Accio. it was Accio. Does anyone say Accio? Because that's very erotic. I'm pretty sure Jim Dale does, unless I'm, like, misremembering. But I, in the audiobook, I think Jim Dale says Asio. Maybe mm. Osio. <laughs> Take the ass out of it. But in the movie, <laughs> they say Accio, so that's strange. Yeah. That usually wouldn't matter, but it's like a spell, you know? Like, you're supposed to say it right. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I think when I was reading this as a kid, I read it as Asio, and then I think the movie replaced that for me. With Accio. So that yeah. like sounds Accio brighter Firebolt. to me now. There's always the Italian reading of Accio. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> like that That's the correct way. Too. That's the correct way. I, like, I actually really like You don't that. even need a wand. You just need the little fist doing. I did a boochie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Hermione explains that because Harry couldn't figure it out. Um, well, I, I, it's, it's unclear how much evidence he has, how much he was like, how much stimuli he was taking in. But Hermione explains that Yaxley came back with them to the stoop of Grimwald Place. And since Dumbledore died and they're now secret keepers, that's the equivalent of being like, here's the house. Come on in. Oh. So they can't go back because the Yaxley and the other Death Eaters will be all over it. I always feel so bad for Creature in this moment, like, and like I know. Harry's like, oh, he's just like sitting, like waiting for us to give get home so he can he can feed us. 
Dude, the creature thing is so upsetting that even Harry thinks about it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> they just became friends, and like he's gonna perceive this as a betrayal. <laughs> he just sent a bunch of people, just... strangers, to my house. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Oh, creature. Yeah, and it's then just we creature. like we never see him again. Question mark. I was just saying the same thing. I'm like, do we even get any? thing from this like we know dobby and all that but what about creature creature the preacher i guess he just like stays here until he gets old and dies question mark or like the death eaters get him but he doesn't have enough information to like harm harry you know because he doesn't know where they went yeah because like he would have only known what they were doing at the ministry nothing after that Mm. yeah although I guess he has enough information to give away that the trio is hunting Horcruxes, actually. So maybe they don't interrogate him because they don't. Voldemort very clearly doesn't learn that until pretty late in the book. And we know exactly when it happens. Yeah. It says on it says on Harry Potter fandom dot com that he's at the Battle of Hogwarts. I kind oh. of had like a feeling about that and I couldn't really remember and I was like, well no, that's crazy. But okay, he comes to the battle of how he's been de-radicalized. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Just a little bit of friendship for like three days out of a very long hard life of abuse. Just a little bit of friendship turned him right around. He never knew love or friendship. <laughs> I mean, like, he was real. so loyal to Regulus because Regulus was nice to him, so Yeah, it's true like that abuse person who's just like I want to cling to someone nice <laughs> uh, yeah it's just like Dobby too Harry seems to have an effect on these, uh, these <laughs> elf, these elf boys Harry Potter breaker of chains <laughs> <laughs> I guess I hope that after creature realizes that like people are coming home and it is like not Harry he like just takes his little assy to Hogwarts and is like, I'm here now. You guys need a resident grandpa. Yeah, you guys are right. Those guys are mean. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you fight. I wonder if like if like Bella would have showed up if it would have been different because like she is a member of the oh, Black yeah. family. So totally, to- I think that yeah, I think that might have like overridden because mm-hmm. Harry didn't give him any commands or anything. He didn't call him, so Bella would have been like the next yeah. in line. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, well, I hope all's well for you, creature. (laughs) You'll figure it out. Ron comes to. Thank God. I mean, I remember reading this for the first time, and I was worried. Yeah, seriously, because a couple of chapters ago, you were like, God, they'll just kill anybody. What if? (laughs) Yeah, and he's, like, got chunks missing, and he's gushing blood. Out of the three, do you think Ron is technically the most expendable? Yes. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Like, kind of no question about it. Yeah. There, I mean, Hermione would never do that kind of thing. She, she, She's too smart to get splint, splinted. Splinched? Splinched, yeah, am I just whatever. Crazy or is that, am I crazy or is that just doesn't sound that... It's not a word to describe the condition very well. I don't know. It sounds too funny. Splinched. There you go, well, splinched. It, but, Harry says that he has always thought about it as comical, and he's looking at Ron, and he's like, this is not fucking funny. Mm -mm. So I think it sounds funny, too, but it's like split. And pinched? Like flinched, pinched. Yeah, it's it's upsetting. Oh, it's upsetting. Yeah, because, um, well, when he was learning how to operate last year... Somebody operated, like, without an eyebrow. That's objectively very funny. If you leave an eyebrow behind. Love that. Yeah. Um, Somebody operated and left a leg, which is very scary and upsetting. But Harry is an asshole, and he was across the room, and they got (laughs) fixed right away. So it's like, that's kind of a little funny. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. (laughs) Like. He was like, remember that funny time I lost my bones? (laughs) (laughs) So funny. So fucking Harry's funny. like, oh, I've lost bones before. Our leg is fine. Ah, body <laughs> horror. That's just that's just Hogwarts. M- mutilation is all part of the curriculum. Literally, <laughs> it literally is. And the, the way they make it okay for kids is by making it shenanigans. And Harry's like, <laughs> this is not shenanigans anymore. We're in the woods. This isn't shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> They're not at Hogwarts, so it's not shenanigans. 
Yeah, because Hermione's holding this together barely. <laughs> barely yeah. holding this together. Hermione says they're in the woods where the Quidditch World Cup was held, um, and they decide to camp there for the night. And now that Ron has stabilized, Hermione starts doing protective charms. She sets up the tent. I just like, Jason, no offense, and this isn't really about you. You're not this kind of guy. But like every chapter more and more, Hermione is living the experience of like the woman (laughs) with men. And I just am like so over it for her. It's like without it didn't you don't want to just start putting up the tent that you know we're going to need. You don't want to just like start casting any protective spells. No, you're going to stand there and say, where are we? Uh, no, don't worry. You sit down, honey. I know you're tired. You've had a long day. I'll do everything. I just saved your best friend's life. I'll don't do hurt everything. your head. Sit down. Just rest, rest your little wheel, wheel rails car. And it's even Harry's fault that they got found out because he stole Ma- uh, Mad Eye's eye. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. That's so true. I- ha- Harry's the one who fucked it all up. <laughs> oh god and that's like so hard because i do think that was like a really righteous thing to do to like take that back what do you y'all think like Haley, what would you have done would you have taken the eye oh yeah most definitely it was like the right move in like to honor Ma- mad eye but like yeah it it didn't let them know that like something was going on yeah i i think it was a pretty like a uh, impulse emotional decision at first like because did they ever find his body no. Mm-mm. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's like the only remnant they have. So that makes yeah. a lot of sense. But he wasn't thinking well, about what the eye could do. Mm-mm. Totally. Um, I guess, yeah, like I see why he took it. And I might have made the same impulse decision myself. But I can also hear Mad-Eye Moody saying, leave the eye, kid. I'll buy another one. It's not that big a deal. Get the fuck <laughs> out of there. Right. <laughs> Constant vigilance. What if he showed up at uh, uh, the King's Cross Station thing? Uh, later in the book. <laughs> it's like, you he's dumb like, oh. fucking... <laughs> he's like, oh, Elvis, I did not know you were handling this one. Um, Do you mind if I sit in? <laughs> I've got a few choice words for that kid. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> or he's like the one person who comes out of the stone at the end. Harry's like surrounded by all the loved ones. And then Mad-Eye oh, just yeah. comes out. He's like, you dumbass. <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you wanker. <laughs> Yeah, so basically I feel for Hermione and if you're a man listening and especially if you got yourself a girl, just like do better. If you need to sleep in the tent tonight, just start putting it up. Don't wait for instruction. Don't wait for someone else to do it. Just look around you and ask yourself, what could I be doing to better myself and my community? You know, <laughs> my community put up the three. fucking tent, put up the fucking tent. It is Perkins' tent from the World Cup, and Harry can tell by smelling. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Harry. <laughs> he didn't He didn't want it back because his lumbago is so bad. Yeah, what's well, lumbago? I've Googled it's, that before. It's a term for back that, like, oh, it just pe- means like back old pain. people use. Like, I don't know why she said that. Said it like that. It literally just means back pain. Oh. It says it's an out, outdated, the, adva- and the Advanced Spine Center says it is an outdated medical term that describes pain in the lower back region. Yeah. Fair that he didn't want it back because he's like, fuck camping, I'm not going to use it. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, <laughs> I'm too be, old be for honest that. with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so Ron asks that they not say Voldemort's name anymore out of respect. That's the kind of thing that, like, when I was a kid, I definitely was like, what the fuck do you mean out of respect? But every, like, as I grow older, I'm like, no, you definitely respect people that you fear. You know what I mean? Like, there's definitely some level of respect there. I guess, but I, I don't know. Like, yeah, maybe maybe I just, I'm just misunderstanding Ron. Like, I, I don't understand why he's so sort of like, what does he say? It just feels like a jinx or something. Does he still feel that, like, the word has power or so well, does it? It, it it does though because i mean that's how they found him at the beginning so yeah this kind of falls in the line of like the thing how people say that ron is a seer and it kind of fits oh, shit. That, i don't think we've br- i don't think we've heard that on the pod before can you expound on that a little bit yeah it's this theory people have that ron when he says like stupid stuff and it like it actually goes into fruition. There's like multiple. Oh great yeah. Things. And like this is huh. one of them because it is technically a jinx. 
like them saying Voldemort's name will lead Voldemort to them. Yeah. Interesting. I really like the Ron hmm. is a seer theory better than my theory, which is that we need Voldemort to not show up yet. <laughs> and so oh. we need we just need a reason and like who's the most superstitious? It's Ron and he just got hurt so he's scared. But I mean, he is the one who grew up in the mug- in the Wizarding World hearing all about Voldemort for this his whole life, his whole 17, 18 years. So I mean, if anyone would be afraid of the name, it would be him. Yeah. I guess I yeah, I guess I just didn't put together that it like is some sort of calling card for Voldemort. Maybe because I didn't yeah, read be- the rest of the book. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's uh, yeah, later they l- like literally they don't say Voldemort's name again for so long. They don't say it again until Ron leaves and then they kind of stop talking altogether and then when Ron comes back, he has learned about the taboo and Harry's like blah 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 Voldemort and Ron's like oh fuck no no no. But it's <laughs> too late and that's how they get picked up later. That's how they oh. end their camping stint. Thank God. (laughs) It took a curse. (laughs) Thank you, Voldemort. The camping was the curse. (laughs) So they go into the tent. They they turn now upon the locket. No one told Ron they got it, first of all, which probably... So as he was, like, bleeding out, he was like, we didn't even get the fucking locket. (laughs) This was like nothing. (laughs) should have told him. I mean... Helping Ron not die is probably more of a priority than being like, oh, I know you're dying, but we got the locket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, priorities. They also, like, think about the the catermoles. Catermoles! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Catermole chicken. Yeah, it's nice. They're like, I really, they, they kind of harp on it for a minute. It's nice that they're thinking of others. Although then they they stop because then they realize what is it that like they probably think Mrs. Catterball didn't get out. Mm-hmm. Because she doesn't have her wand, so apparition. No, might not they said they said what if? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like just don't think about it. Don't think about it. Yeah, the the vibe is like nope. I'm sure they got out. <laughs> I have to <laughs> tell myself great. that they got out. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, especially going into this horrible camping trip, you just got to give yourself all the hope and positivity you can. So they're looking at the locket. Harry's like, we'll need to figure out how to destroy it. I don't know. We have to open it to destroy it, but we kind of got nothing. I don't know. I didn't think I'd get this far. Like, <laughs> li- like literally, <laughs> the plan the plan began and ended with getting into the Ministry of Magic. Mm-hmm. They, they have nothing more. <laughs> <laughs> Chase it. They think that maybe they can feel a little heartbeat inside of it. Ew. I so hate gross. It. A little snaky heart. <laughs> it's upsetting. And so, like, I get why the movies were like, ooh, let's make it make a horrible noise. They just didn't, like, think that through, you know, to, like, okay, would that, like, mess up any other things in this book? You know, like... Why can't hear Harry hear the Horcrux in his head, yeah. etc.? Why didn't he hear it with the diary? There's a lot of things that like don't make sense with like Harry being a Horcrux because like the Basilisk Fang. Why didn't he kill the Horcrux and oh, Harry? Oh my god! <laughs> oh. oh 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 oh! He said. I never oh. thought of that. <laughs> I read so many Wait Harry Potter <laughs> theories. <laughs> <laughs> No, it definitely that, and that's how, that's like the proof that to me that's proof that J.K. Rowling did not know about the Horcruxes in the beginning. Oh no! Like, and no I don't think no, there's no, no. a lot of pushback about that, but that's my proof, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, she she planned out certain things because I think like she had the last chapter planned, but I think that oh, yeah that was like it, and she mm-hmm. definitely did not plan it out in the best way possible. It's like watching a TV show where they abandon a plot halfway through. Oh my god. Yeah. To oh me, my god. To me, it always kind of felt like she read Lord of the Rings and wanted her own. Because, oh like, it's this god, ti- yes. tiny little thing that goes around your neck and almost is part of someone's soul or someone's essence, just like the one ring is. 
And yeah, it's like totally. full of like bad thoughts and it's like heavy and it tricks with your mind and stuff like that. <laughs> the way that they be wearing the Horcrux and getting depressed is the entire Hobbit plot line from the two towers. Yeah. That's like every time the book switches to them, you're like, oh, these fucking idiots just being depressed in the middle of nowhere. That's exactly yeah. what this is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're not even in the woods. They're in some place <laughs> much worse. Yeah, they do wish they wish they were camping in the woods. <laughs> yeah. Remember trees? Oh, yeah. oh my god. J.R.O. Tolkien is like, yes, I do. <laughs> I've never forget. <laughs> Um, Harry puts it on for safekeeping, and they decide to take turns wearing it. Haley, do you think that wearing it is necessary? No, I I definitely do do not, especially because you can't Accio the Horcrux. So if they had it, like, somewhere nearby where, like, even in Hermione's bag. Or in Harry's bag pouch from Hagrid yep. that only he can go into. It's yeah. literally magic for that purpose. Oh, yeah. Why are they wearing it? Because they're because idiots. drama. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so... Because they need to drive Ron. From this chapter, he's like... Harry's like, I don't fucking know what to do next. And Ron's like, well, I just got injured and I'm feeling fine about it. They have to get Ron from this to leaving. Mm-hmm. And the only way to do that, I guess, is to artificially depress him. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, do you think wearing it is necessary? No, I, I mean they have several situations. I guess <laughs> yeah, we I just guess, named a lot. I guess it, their mentality is that like we cannot lose this thing, so we have to keep it on our persons at all times. But even then, like I don't know, a pocket you don't have to wear it, whatever. Yeah, I I agree. Having that heartbeat right next to your own skin would be <sighs> so aggravating. Like that alone, yeah. would, like make me <laughs> depressed. And, it, and it's like perpetually cold too. Yes. Oh yeah. Well, that it's probably nice now because it's like warm out. Yeah, but come Christmas time. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is England. You're right. It's probably not actually still warm out. They're hungry. They have nothing to eat. They eat some mushrooms, and Ron is like, ugh. I'd rather not. Also, I, just, I mean, uh, just kill me. Uh, how, mu- how much? How much do we trust Hermione to forage non-poisonous mushrooms? See, okay, I trust her to forage the non-poisonous ones, but her cooking skills are crap. So uh, that's yeah. where it gets tricky. She's smart enough to know which ones are good, but okay, not to cook them. I was just wondering, what's a Billy can? I have no idea because that's what she cooked it in. Oh, wait, can you spell that for me? It's like Billy the name and then can, like C-A-N. It's all one word. Um, It's an Australian term for a lightweight cooking pot in the form of a metal bucket commonly used for boiling water. It literally looks like a coffee pot, like a coffee tin. Oh, Not yeah, a coffee pot, a and coffee you just like throw it on the fire. fire. Yeah, it's pretty classic throw it in the fire. Uh, I think that if I knew I had found a non-poisonous mushroom... If I don't have any food, I think I'm eating that mushroom raw. Yeah. I think that an uh, like an unseasoned, all by itself mushroom easier to get down raw than cooked, in my opinion. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not a fan of mushrooms, but yeah, that'd be like I, I get wrong because like it does have that like rubbery texture when it's cooked and stuff oh, like it's, that. Yeah. I mean, I have faith. Like I, I love a mushroom, a cooked mushroom, a sautéed mushroom. But magical mushrooms, you gotta just kind of like throw them down, mm. and that is hard. Try and get the magical mushrooms down your throat. You're just like, Bleh. <laughs> <laughs> is this worth the fun that I'm gonna have the rest of the day? It <laughs> usually is. Yeah, usually. Because if you, I, I've, I've grinded them before in my grinder and then put them on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But then you have to seriously disinfect the grinder because if you inhale the spores, it's terrible. For you. Oh God! <laughs> oh. Mm-hmm. Harry is stressed and vulnerable, and it's time for another vision. <laughs> <sighs> uh, more dreams. He's Voldemort again. And he's torturing Grigorovich, and he's like, give it to me. Give it to me, Greggy boy. <laughs> Greg Greg swears that it, it was stolen from him years ago. And then in the vision, so this is like visionception, Voldemort 
Harry goes into Greg's memory to see the thief of the name of the chapter, the thief. Can Harry do that? Yeah. I fucking guess. He can go inside. <laughs> so he can no, like go in. Voldemort did. Yeah, so he can tell what Voldemort has seen and what also he has dreamed or witnessed in the past. Yeah. Wait, I'm, conf- I'm so confused. Okay, so like, okay, so Harry is in a scene right now. Mm-hmm, as Voldemort. Harry is Voldemort in a scene, and in that scene, Voldemort is reading this other guy's memory actively. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So Harry is seeing, like, what Voldemort is seeing at that time. Oh, okay, okay. And Voldemort just has to be, happens to be seeing something else about someone. Yeah, he's getting, Harry's getting called to this because it's plot relevant and it's making Voldemort really mad. Yeah, I'd like it for once if Harry just got a vision of, like, uh, him doing something really mundane. Taking a shit. <laughs> taking a shit, taking a, uh, <laughs> I don't know, eat, eating something. I imagine Voldemort has to eat and that's just what kind if of. It was, what if it was a whole tomato? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to picture that. <laughs> well, I would. I what I'm thinking is that Voldemort did the um where you go inside the head of someone. The oh my god, what is it freaking called? Oh yeah, legilimum. Yeah. So and that's how Harry can see because he's in Voldemort's mind. So the scene's going through Voldemort's mind. And yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. That's how he's okay. seeing it. That makes sense. I really, that makes sense. I really like this scene in the movie because you get Jamie Bauer Campbell, whatever his name is, as oh. uh, uh, Grindelwald, because that's the one who stole it. Oh, oh yeah, that's right, the right, thief. Right, right. The thief Spaggins. We don't know that yet, but Harry's just like, yeah. who is this guy? Yeah, and Vol- ca- Voldemort's like, who the fuck is this guy? Who is yeah, the real says, thief here? He says that he had there was like a wild. Um, Thing about him, he was married and wild, and Fred and George-ish heir of triumph and trickery. I love that. <laughs> it's like I'm on your, whoever whoever you are. I'm on your side immediately. Right? You remind me of my friends. You're making shit hard for Voldemort. I b- am behind it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Hermione has even used this excuse to be like, if you just learned oculumency. <laughs> no, two, I know. Okay. Two years ago, like I fucking told you. <laughs> So I know in my experience anyway, that is another essential part of womanhood and especially being around men is watching them suffer and then being like, I presented you the solution to this a long time ago. <laughs> are you looking to vent or are you looking for a solution? Because the solution was <laughs> here two years ago staring at you in the face. Dumbledore gave you the tool for this, dude. No, it was hard. I didn't like it. <laughs> he, it, he, he really didn't like it. He, there are very few things, you're right, Jason, that he has done that he was not immediately good at. And the only thing I can really think of is the Patronus. And that was kind of like, not quite life or death, but close to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At the end, it was. It, it yeah. was pretty close to it. Yeah. yeah. So. And he was good at Quidditch and. Yeah. At first and he too, gets brownie so. points for doing the Patronus now. He gets all the praise. Everyone's like, it's yeah, like his fucking yeah. favorite really spell. Does. He loves showing it off. It's like literally, he taught literally everyone else how to do it too. It's like mm-hmm. not that big of a deal anymore. Right? Yeah, it doesn't even sound that hard. It sounds like everyone could do it. <laughs> so, yeah, Hermione like wakes him up from his little cat nap just to fuss at him, which is like, I mean, like, I'm with you, Hermione, but you <laughs> gotta dreaming. know that that's, that's not a good way to wake someone up. <laughs> well, it's funny because he's like, oh, must have been dream- chosen off. I'm so sorry. He tries to play it off, and Hermione's like, no, don't give me that bullshit. No way, bitch. Yeah, for sure. Um, But this part upsets me because she refuses to even let him discuss what he's seen, which feels very stupid of her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, I think I better take a look. Yeah, she just kind of gives up. Like, don't you think that more information is better? Yeah, she actually, yeah, she says you're obviously exhausted. Go to bed, which is like so condescending and like patronizing and fucked up. She's stressed. She is. She just saw the guy she loves almost dying. That's true. She's had a long day. She had to do everything. <laughs> she does also, like, <laughs> this. there's just, like, a little bit of her original, like, rigid lawfulness left inside of her. Like, most of it has gone, but the, this, like, well, <laughs> occlumency, that's, <laughs> like, 
that's the remnants of her intense lawfulness. Yeah. Oh yeah, most definitely. She still yeah. is like that stickler and has to be correct about everything. Which yeah, fair. So then Ron is like, what did you see? And this is where Harry like ex- describes to him the dream or the vision and and he I mean, right? This is where he's like I really don't know anything. And Ron's like, huh? Well, I hear you, and I respect it. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe that was earlier. I don't really remember where in the chapter that happened, but... Oh, here we go. Uh, Because he asked... He's like, oh, wouldn't it be dangerous to make another, like, Horcrux? And... Yeah. um, Ron's like, yeah, but he doesn't know that. So, like... Well, yeah, there's a lot of maybes in this conversation. mm -hmm. Hmm. None of them know anything because Dumbledore was like, "You need to find these things," but I'm not going to tell you what they are. Yeah, <laughs> and Harry does have a couple moments like of resenting Dumbledore in this chapter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like earlier too in the chapter when they're talking about the Horcrux, and Hermione's like, "What are we going to do with it?" And Harry's like, "Keep it safe until we can destroy it." Like, I'm just bringing all this to everyone's attention because, like, when Ron later is like. You did not make it clear how little you knew. He's just not being truthful, I think. Like, he leaves for other reasons and just says what he has to. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. like, I-, I feel like Harry's pretty transparent about how little he knows. Oh, I definitely agree with that. Like, Harry is not a liar. Harry is not someone who will just, like, bullshit things. He's very yeah. upfront about, especially with Ron. Ron, he'd probably be more truthful than mm-hmm. Hermione because that was his first friend. That's like the first person who granted him any like good thing in the Wizarding World other than like Hagrid. And Ron's mm-hmm. not policing him right now mm-hmm. about his vision. You know, like they already have this like honesty. So yeah, I agree. We're already at the end of the chapter, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a small chapter. <laughs> I know it really is like nothing. So I'm glad that you came on this one, Haley, so that we could like chit chat about other stuff and like, yeah. you know, not worry too much about the plot because what yeah. plot? No <laughs> plot. <laughs> yeah, it's just a lot of conversation, just a lot of arguing and conversations that don't really go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, it is like a little frustrating in books this long. This happened in Order of the Phoenix too. Not as much in Half Blood Prince. It is frustrating in a book this long to have a chapter like this that just like doesn't have a meaningful arc. There's not like a real thing happening. Like whatever is happening, you could just you could have put this in another it so- chapter. It didn't need to be separate. Stick it somewhere else. Yeah, like stick it with the next one. Because, I mean, I guess a lot happens in the next chapter, too. But I guess that's kind of like the downside to... I mean, there's a lot of downsides. But that's like (laughs) the major downside to writing the plot this way with them being like in hiding in the woods is that for so long it's just like a bunch of piecemeal shit that you kind of got to have to like force into a chapter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm looking at the next chapter and it's like a lot of random different shit, you know? Yeah. It makes me think of like other stories where i feel like this has been done way i mean obviously this has been done better but like there have been like maybe other books and movies i've seen where you know things calm down like they they get out of the bad situation then they just have to like chill out somewhere for a little bit the one that comes to mind is i i doubt if you've seen this but the um there's the teenage mutant ninja turtles movie from the 90s have you guys oh, ever seen yeah. that? I definitely did in the 90s. I don't really yeah, remember it. Though. That that has kind of like a similar scene where they have this huge fight. They got defeated and then they hide out in a farm and mm-hmm. they just like chill out and talk to each other. But it's like it's not pointless chatter about what to do next and stuff like that. It's it's giving you a chance to like get to know everybody and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It's like okay. it's just character conversations. It's just, uh, you know, introspective stuff. It's not. I, I, it's definitely not this. <laughs> yeah, I really don't think that JK could have written that. You I know? don't think she's seen the movie. The t- <laughs> <laughs> well, and then the problem is that we've had seven <laughs> books with these characters, or six books up to this point. We know who mm-hmm. they are. True. So. Yeah. yeah. It would have been cool to get some, like, character development going, and then maybe we can, like, Harry's, like, taking a new look at these characters and being like, huh, I didn't realize Hermione, like, how 
flexible you've gotten or like ron i didn't realize how how much you've learned to like keep a lid on your anger you know what i mean like if the, if they're they there could have been meaningful stuff with their characters yeah. i think she just uses the time to like make them argue which is like artificial drama yeah, yeah. and hard to read or even like how um when they were at um oh gosh what's the house called grimald place yeah grimald place and how harry noticed like that Ron and Hermione held hands while they slept and how it made him kind of feel lonely on that and Mm -hmm. kind of maybe explore more of that kind of situation because yeah you don't get a lot of I'm gonna dance with that lady (laughs) 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 like you don't get moments of the Ron Hermione stuff as much and this could have been like a, a little chapter to like bring it together yeah, and that would, to make the blow of him leaving in the next chapter even harder. Mm-hmm. And that's the other crazy thing is the next chapter has enough random shit in it that at the end of it, Ron leaves. That's next chapter. Oh, gosh. Wow. I know. It happens, like, a lot more quickly than it seems because these chapters just feel long. Goblin's Revenge and then Godric Saul. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. I got to say, I do remember these scenes being, like, I don't know, maybe it's because, like, they cut it down severely, but I do remember the wood stuff not being that bad in the movie. Yeah, it definitely is. They streamline like, it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. They streamline it so much, like so much of what they do in the woods is gone. Like there's the whole like Phineas Nigelus subplot mm-hmm. where that he comes up a lot because he's in the purse right now. He's in Hermione's purse, and Ew. so um, the his portrait. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um. So. That takes some time. That comes up, like, kind of a lot. And then there's, like, the whole radio thing that takes up some time. And it's, like, interesting stuff. I think all these things are interesting. Is that even in the movie, the radio? No. I didn't think so. Wait, Ron's listening to a radio. Like, to, like, hear... To listen to news, right? Maybe as, like, a background... Like, like it's a, a pretty involved thing in the book where they, like... I think they, like, over... He's, like, listening for names, right? Yeah. Yeah, yes. That's the thing. Ron that's the thing. In the movie Ron is just listening for names. In the book, it takes some time. They spend several days trying to find the right station, trying to pick the right password without knowing it ahead of time, and then they listen to like the whole show for like half a chapter. Mm-hmm. That sounds fun. It's a little fun, but it's also like, oh my god, we're trying to kill Voldemort. Like, let's go. <laughs> see, that was one of my favorite parts of the book, because, like, you get to see what the others are doing, because, like, especially you're counteracting the boringness of the chapters of, like, the camping, yeah. to see what the others are doing, and I mean, I'm I'm a Fred and George girly. I love them. So to he- <laughs> hear, like, their side and everything, it's always nice. And also yeah. me. Agreed. Oh, Yeah. I kind of forgot about that. Yeah. So, like, I like that stuff. It just, like, uh, like, I guess what I would have cut is a bunch of the dumb magical bullshit that is really essential to our core plot. <laughs> <laughs> and leave in the shenanigans. Exactly. That's what this book needs. More shenanigans. More shenanigans. More splinching. <laughs> no. <laughs> Please, no. What? It's funny. <laughs> It's, yeah, hilarious. Maybe you'll leave a whole leg next time. <laughs> <laughs> Haley, do you have any last thoughts about the chapter? Anything we didn't get to? Um, Not totally. Um, I just forgot how short it was. Because when you brought yeah. it up, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. And then I'm like, oh, it's so short. <laughs> it is yeah. very short. <laughs> just, It's interesting coming back to this book. I haven't read it in probably 10 years. Um. Mm-hmm. So just to come back to it and, like, just thinking about how I felt as a kid to read this for the first time. It was interesting. Yeah. Well, how, like, tell us more about that. Do you, what do you remember? So I a lot of it I don't remember. I remember a lot more about, the, like, the movie than the book itself. But, like, yeah. just the yeah. excitement I kn- knew from, like, getting this book. Um and, like, going and experiencing the um, midnight release at Barnes & Owls and finally getting how the story ends was so exciting mm-hmm. as a however old I was. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. It was kind of the, end, the like, end game of the time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Set up over, like, a long period of time and finally ends. <laughs> yes, in an, in an end game. 
And they keep trying to make new stuff, and no one's into it. <laughs> it's just hey, like Marvel. I'll go. I'll go see any Ant Man movie. I swear to God, I'm a oh. Marvel girly. I will watch every Marvel movie. So, <laughs> bring, give me more. I think the Marvel fatigue is, has finally set in for me. Like after Endgame, I was just like, "That's cool. Story's over. I don't really need any more." I joined it yeah. late. I got in like. At, um, oh. at Infinity War, so... Oh, oh shit. Okay. Oh, shit. I started, like, way back, like, when Iron Man came out. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, so exactly. I'm new. I'm, like, the second I'm, like, they did that cut scene, the second they did that post credit scene of, like, the Avengers Initiative and stuff, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> wait, they do end scenes? <laughs> yeah, that was fun, too, back at the time. <laughs> I do think that, like, this last book especially, re- and reading it for the first time, there was, like, this feeling of, like, an uncontrollable momentum, kind of. Like, a lot of, like, our characters being, like, thrown into situations. And, like, this chapter definitely has some of that. It's like, okay, I guess we're fucking camping now. Because, like, that's just, like, where this story has brought us. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what will happen next? More camping. Was the splinching like that was pretty like bloody in the movie, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that it was a lot. I think it's a lot less bloody in the movie than it is in the book. Yeah, because oh, okay. yeah, he's missing a chunk of himself. It kind of reminded me of like the Sectus Sempra. Like, yeah, scene. like the the book is like there is a chunk missing, and in the movie, it kind of looks like he maybe got, got like a, a, a layer of skin kind of like mm-hmm. shuffed off like there's not gore I just typed in Ron into my Google search bar forgot <laughs> to type anything else and it said Ron DeSantis <laughs> Ron Ron Perlman or Ron Howard those are my options oh Ron Burgundy I'll do that one <laughs> Jason do you have any last thoughts about the chapter um well, I mean, my originally planned, the last chapter I was going to do was the last one, the last episode. I was on The Will of Albus Dumbledore. Oh, and I yeah. went out And I liked that chapter, and I went out on a high note. And then <laughs> you got me... And now it's been ruined, because you made me read this chapter. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> I thought I was done reading this book, Tina. God dang it. <laughs> yeah, you went from a high to a low. You also get to come on for The Wand Maker in August. I do? You do, and then you're also oh. on the f- the final film movie. Yeah, I, I, I knew I about mean the episode. I knew about the movie one. I didn't know I was in the Wand Maker. So did I just take back everything I said? <laughs> yeah, you get another chance. That one's probably a little better. That's uh, are you putting it in your planner? It's August twenty eighth. <laughs> okay. The Wand Maker. I just want to look and see what the picture is. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, I think no. It's, it's, like, not that no. interesting. <laughs> Let's see what happens in this chapter. Bitch, shut up. You're so excited. <laughs> oh, no. I just saw the Here Lies Dobby of Real. Oh, stop. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> but then you get to come on for the film part two, and that's going to be great. Mm-hmm. That's going to be great. My final thoughts about this chapter are, should have been in some other chapters. I probably would have just schlepped the, since the next, okay, well, here's the thing. The next chapter ending with Ron leaving, I will admit you cannot have that in the same chapter as like when they get here, you have to have like a build, but like yeah, I maybe, what you mean. maybe what I would do instead is like, I would like schlep this all together, this chapter and the next chapter instead of having like a bunch of like small piecemeal things, you find like the one thing that is the arc of this chapter, find the one thing, let, let it be Ron. Let the, the one thing of the chapter be the arc of Ron. Let it take place over a couple days and have it, have it happen like really quickly instead of like this long festering depression that we like drag through in the next chapter, have Ron show up hurt immediately realize that he's hungry have him put that horcrux around his neck tomorrow and be like i can't fucking do this and leave you know Mm -hmm. that actually would be better because ron as we know has anger issues so definitely having it come on quicker could show how the horcrux is can really hurt someone in a short amount of time so that would work way better have like a little uh Little Smeagol moment where he just lashes out or something. Yes, exactly. exactly. And I, 
I think that works better for him coming back too, because like the way that he does leave, it's like he's thought about this. He's oh, been thinking about yeah. leaving for a couple of days. But if he had just made like one really bad decision, that's I think so much more relatable. Mm-hmm. That one yeah. hurtful and thing. And so much and more forgivable. Like, yeah. Because we all do shit that isn't nice. You know, we all do wrong shit. And then you are like, oh, I'm sorry. That came out wrong. Or like, I'm sorry. I did not. Like, that was really hot of me. I'm sorry. But he doesn't. <laughs> he wouldn't get that opportunity. Yeah, too spicy, too spicy. Yeah, don't have so Ron that's probably say, what I would have done. like, the hurtful things, like, about, like, Harry not having parents and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot about that. <laughs> this is why your parents are dead, Harry. <laughs> And that would, like, give that chapter an arc. Ron would be your arc that would resolve mm-hmm. the problem of this chapter and the next chapter not having good arcs. And you could squeeze in other bullshit around it. And it would, it's, a, you know, I almost said, like, nice. It's not nice as a reader experience, but it is nice in terms of, like, storytelling. After you get this joy of having made it out of the ministry with the Horcrux, we did what we wanted to do. And just that deflation of having Ron leave right away would have been, yeah. I just think, very narratively interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I die on this hill. All right. Are we ready to move on to plugs? Sure. Yeah. Hell yeah. Haley, do you want people to find you on the internet? Yeah, um, I am. I'm actually doing a fun thing on TikTok where I'm doing. Oh yeah, a hundred musicals in a hundred days. Even though it's more than a hundred now, because people keep it's telling like 150. Me, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, yeah, people kept going. Oh, what about this one? I'm like, shoot, that's a good one too. Um, <laughs> so my name on TikTok is. Let me. I don't remember my names on TikTok. Oh, <laughs> I'm actually one. the Badger Queen ninety. Oh my god! (laughs) Wait, what does that meme say? Honey, honey, badger, badger queen, don't give a fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Hell yeah! And what's something you've been watching, reading, playing, listening to lately? You think the listeners would enjoy? Um, Well, I just because of TikTok, I just got back into seeing about the perks of being a wallflower, and so I just reread that. Oh, cool! Oh. Does, does it hold up? It does. It's still very sad and still good. Okay. Hell yeah. Ooh. Awesome. Um, I'm trying to remember the author. It's like Steven Zvosky or something. Yeah, something like that. It's linked in the show notes. <laughs> Jason, where can the people find you on the internet? Um, you can find me on Instagram at uh, Negative Selections. It's not so much a personal account. It's mostly just a showcase for my film photography. But... Uh, Hell yeah. yeah, that's 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 all I got. Awesome. And what are you plugging this week? Yeah, plugging. Um, can I plug a little show called Burn Before Reading? Because they just had a really <gasps> good episode come out yesterday. Oh my god! Well, last week is that the one you're talking about? No, the because wait, this, wait, what, this will come out in a week from now. So the oh one right, that came out right, last right. Week. <laughs> uh, I, I, I am speaking about the one with Ethan Medina because that was a, that was Ethan. really cool to uh, hear you guys talk together. <laughs> Yeah, the one that came out today is just me and Leela doing a little ussy, which is good, but not mm. the same. Hell yeah, I'm so glad you liked it. We loved that one. Yeah, that was uh, it was a lot of energy and a lot of a lot of good chemistry going on. I feel like you guys are kind of like finally getting like the groove of everything going in that show. Oh, I yeah, definitely yeah. agree. I, agree. I oh, love it. Thank too. you so much. And like having such a wonderful guest really energizes things too, you know. Yeah, a professional comedian is, is like, good. It's true. Yeah, it makes a big difference. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jason. Uh, I've been your host, Christina. You know where to find me over on Burn Before Reading. <laughs> Here's what I've been reading lately for Pride Month. I read A Queer History of the United States by Michael Bronsky. That was very informative and interesting. I read, I think I might have plugged this last week, Lucky Red by Claudia Cravens, which is like a lesbian Western. Um, I read Mouse by Art Spiegelman, which is a bit of a legendary graphic novel. Make sure you do it in a good headspace, Jason. (laughs) Yeah, that one's hard. What's that? I mean, it's brutal, obviously like very important and very beautiful, but also brutal. And then... Like four minutes before this podcast recording, I finished, and it's like a shock to me that I haven't brought it up until now. Because I, I mean, 
I fucking loved this book. I read Some Desperate Glory by Emily Tesh, which is like escaping cults in space using time travel, kind of. What? Like it, <laughs> and it was just like, <laughs> it was so fucking, I, it's like uh, one of those science fiction novels that's like kind of indescribably interesting and complex. I just highly recommend it to anyone who's interested in science fiction. It was so fucking good. Like, uh, does not hold its punches and like, just like shocking twists. Like a lot of things that make you just like drop the book. And I was, Alex (laughs) read it before me and I I was like, can you believe that this happened? And she said, I dropped the book when that happened. And I said, I dropped the book too. (laughs) Wow. I don't think I've ever done that before. (laughs) That's right. Sometimes you're just like, how could you do this to me? And you have to get the book (laughs) away from you. But then you're like, wait, 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 what happens next? And you have to grab it up again. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Um, I will also just remind the listeners that the restricted section has a Patreon. Yeah, we do. Um, It's awesome. And for our $5 a month tier, you can get access to our bonus episodes. And our June bonus episode is about fascism sexism and racism in and anti-semitism there's other ones that are in there probably too um in harry potter so that's really uplifting and exciting last month we did small medium or large with our friend phil which is actually very uplifting and funny yeah and then our next our next month's bonus episode is actually going to be talking about the midnight releases a little bit of nostalgia Um, in the midst of all these bigger issues. So that's our $5 a month tier. For a dollar a month, you can also uh, become part of our Discord server where me, Haley, and Jason hang out, and it's a lot of fun. It's a fun place to be, so consider it. Haley, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so glad we got you, girl. I'm so happy to join, finally. It's so nice. Yes. Hell yes. Yeah, it's fun. Hell yeah. And Jason, thank you for being there. I appreciate you. He, he's not part of our regular cast, but uh, and everyone else bailed. So, <laughs> <laughs> And he called in from his hotel room. So I'm just very grateful to you for making this work. Yeah, no problem. And I'm just glad that I was able to give you such an interesting chapter. To it was really amazing. Glad. I dropped the book. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how? I want to see if the mic picks it up. Was that like really loud? No. I couldn't hear it on Zoom, but I definitely will in the recording. Yeah, There's I no think... way it didn't pick it up. Yeah, great. <laughs> he dropped it from like, sh- well, you're sitting. So from like waist height <laughs> onto the floor. Okay, well, that's the end of it. Let's go camping. Yay, camping. Yay! Ah, yeah. Camping. <laughs> Have fun with that. Right. That's it, potheads. Thanks for listening to The Restricted Section. Hosted and produced by me, Christina Kahn. The music produced by Ryan Kahn. Logo designed by Michael Hardison. Please don't find us on social media. I am not doing anything there. However, you are welcome to join our Patreon. For a dollar a month, you can gain access to our Discord server, which is a lot of fun. And for $5 a month, you get access to our monthly bonus episodes. There's also a $10 and a $20 tier as well. So please go check that out. We are honored to be part of Deus Ex Media Podcast Network, which features lots of wonderful podcasts for nerds, including this one. Charlie, I'm so glad I found you. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. The break was hard, but I'm not injured. Thank the gods. What do we do now? Okay, Ray, I need you to listen to me. There's only one book left. And I know it's going to be hard. But we have to get through it. I know. Okay, I'm going to run out and start reading. Good plan. Okay. I'll start emailing guests. Charlie, no! You're an introvert! It's okay! I can do this! Remember me, Charlie! I love you, buddy! For Rick! Check out Of the Eldest Gods. Episodes every Thursday. Now covering Book 5 of Percy Jackson and the Olympians. The Last Olympian. Uh, Episode over. Dave X Media.